Hey everyone, my name is Adam Nitty. I'm a bass player based out of Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm here today on behalf of Bass Frontiers. And I just want to say before going any further, it's, it's really an honor and uh, a pleasure to, to be here on behalf of the publication. Um, my good friend Dave Fowler was res responsible for setting this up. And I uh, just want to say a big thanks to him and, and the rest of the organization as well. So um, they've asked me to tell a little bit of my story so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do that to the best of my ability and um, I don't know hopefully you'll come away from this interview with a little bit of information that, that might help you in your musical walk as you uh, as you move forward. I was born in upstate New York in Rochester and uh, I came from parents who were quite creative in their own right and my, uh, my mom's side of the family in particular was, was very music oriented. And my uh, grandfather, Donald DeSiria, was probably my first real legitimate influence in my life musically. And he was a um, classical violinist, also a conductor and a, and a great pianist. And um, I grew up, when we went to visit my uh, grandparents, grew up around music. He would. Uh, He'd always be playing, and he'd always try to get me to come over to the piano and, and demonstrate things to me. And I showed an interest in a, in a very early age, and so I, I, my parents kind of identified early on, you know, from the time I was about four years old, that I had an, an ear for music, or at the very least was very interested in, in hearing music. My, uh, my father's side of the family, uh, also very creative and very, very talented, more so from a... Um, I guess a, a hands-on tactical perspective. My, my father, for most of my life, was a restorer of uh, exotic automobiles, which gave me a love for uh, speed and sports cars from a, from a very, very early age. And being around my, my father when I was young, I was always observed him creating things, fixing things with his, with his hands, always very detail-oriented and always very meticulous in his work. And, um, always exhibited just utmost in excellence in everything he did and everything he, he touched pretty much. Very, very hard worker. Came from a um, very small town in Italy and grew up quite poor and basically just made his life what he, what he wanted it to be and, and uh, supported his, his family and, you know, through his, through his hard work and through uh, you know, my, my parents' encouragement collectively, I was able to get into music through their, uh, through their support of things like lessons and purchasing musical instruments and things like that. When I turned 17 years old, I found out about this music school, which at the time was an offshoot of uh, Musicians Institute in Hollywood, and it, it was now called the Atlanta Institute of Music. But back then, the official name was Musicians Institute, Atlanta Institute of Music. And I was at a time in my life where I was really, really serious about wanting to get good on the instrument. I, I, was, I was old enough and experienced enough to know that all the things I had been working on were not all there was to know in, in music. And I, I really wanted to get serious about expanding my, my knowledge and expanding my musical horizons. So I enrolled in the, in the program there, and, and that, that music institute was basically like a, a one-year cert certificate program, and they had the classes categorized into different topics, like, you know, styles, scales and technique, reading, and, and things like that. And in addition to attending those classes, you also had a, a private instructor as well. And I studied under a guy named Russ Rogers who I'm still very good friends with today. He still teaches at the Atlanta Institute of Music. Incredible player. And Russ was the perfect person for me at that time in my life because of several reasons. One, he was absolutely insanely dedicated to his practice routine. And he was very, very disciplined and he was very, very organized. And Russ had a, a system for, for teaching that even though he was dealing with all different sorts of, of players, it was a very universally compatible system. And for me, it was my very first introduction into anything that was related to theory or, or harmony, because up to that point, I mean, I'd just been doing everything by ear. So Russ taught me about the relationship between scales and chords, um, 
taught me about you know just basic harmonic concepts and he really dug in even more into my technique and and what I already had going on he dissected it and he fine-tuned it got me to you know a, a higher plane with, with with my facility and um, made it made the bass easier to play which was very encouraging and inspirational because the more you feel comfortable with your instrument and the more you feel comfortable playing your instrument and the more you feel comfortable playing your instrument the more you're gonna want to pick it up if you have an instrument that you have to fight all the time well, you know, it doesn't make for a very enjoyable, inspirational experience when, when you play. There was a, another aspect of, of, um, of our teacher-student relationship that, that was really, really cool as well. And Russ was a um, huge, huge, huge Jaco Pastorius fan. And I had just gotten hip to Jaco about a year prior. And, you know, like everybody else who had heard Jocko for the first time, it was it was incredible. It it was like combining the chop stuff that I I had been, you know, pursuing and had been you know attracted to in the past, combining that with actually a, a melodic quality and something that that actually could uh, build and Im, Im, imply harmony combined with those chops, but overall with, with a beautiful feel coming from a foundation of, of Jocko's experience and, and emotion in, in his lifetime. So that was, that was opening up, it was starting to open up a new world for me. And when I met, when I met Russ, it was great because he was, he was such a huge fan. Russ had, Russ had learned and transcribed so much of Jocko's stuff already to that time, and he shared a lot of that with me. Something very tragic happened that, that same year that, that we were working together, and I, I didn't realize at the time how it would kind of help shape some of my, my playing story, and that was Jocko's death. And Jocko actually died on my birthday, and um, I'll never forget hearing about that and, and obviously being you know, very bummed out and, and distraught over over that news, but in in some in some way, I almost felt like a responsibility to you know try in whatever meager way I, I could, you know, to sort of carry on the legacy of, of pursuing excellence in playing, you know, in 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 honor of that, and. Uh, I, I really, I really feel like the, um, you know, the emotional impact of, of, of that day and just, you know, coinciding with my birthday and just sort of the, you know, the, uh, the uniqueness of, of that was something that kind of, you know, became a, a, a part of my story because it always helped me remember that time in my life and the aspects of development that, that I was experiencing at that time. And I feel like if I didn't remember those those times, then you know I, I might not have have been on the same exact path over the long term. And I really I really believe that you know all players, you know it doesn't matter if you are a, a, a soloist. It doesn't matter if if you're playing in a blues band. You know it doesn't matter if you're just playing cover tunes, society gigs, or whatever. I mean, my, my personal philosophy is always, always pursue excellence in what you're doing. You know, play to the best of your ability. You know, keep pushing the envelope, trying to, to get better and better all the time so that you become a, an even better representative and, and ambassador of integrity in, in music. And um, it's, it's exciting for me to to talk about those those sort of things and, sh and share those sorts of things with with other players because I, I feel like as as somebody who's now been around for a little while you know I, I, I'm at an age now where I can I can actually sort of pass on information and I try to do that whenever I can and you know just like when I was younger I was so reliant on people who had already been there passing on their information to me you know, being a being a positive influence on me I, I really feel like that's that's a very important part of, of my life now